Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi. Today we're going to begin Chapter 2, Special Structure and Solutions of ODEs. In particular, today I'm going to focus on autonomous ODEs and the fact that time shifts of solutions of autonomous ODEs are still solutions, but with a different initial condition, and how they generate a flow on phase space. Okay, so we're going to consider autonomous ODEs. x dot equals f of x, x and rn, the general case, with initial condition x at time zero equals x naught. Okay, we're going to take the initial time to be zero, and we can worry about how general that is later on. Okay, so the notation I have for solutions, you want to make sure you understand this. There are usually three arguments. Time on the left, the initial position in phase space x naught on the right, and the initial time in the middle, which we're going to take as zero. And at time zero, Evaluating that solution at time zero gives us the initial condition. All right, so what we want to prove is this relation 2.2. x dot d by dt of the solution x at t plus s for any constant s, we're just shifting the argument in time, is equal to f of x of t plus s. Okay, that's not obviously true. We know x of t satisfies this. d by dt of x of t equals f of x of t. But it would be true if, looking at 2.3, if d by dt were equal to d by dt plus s. Because then we would just be essentially changing the variable of time in equation 2.2. And by the chain rule, little application of the chain rule, we see that the left-hand side d by dt and the right-hand side d by dt plus s are equal. So, time shifts a solution. So if we have a solution x of t that at time 0 is x naught, then x at t plus s is a solution, but at time 0 it satisfies a different initial condition. Otherwise, um, we wouldn't have uniqueness of solutions. So if we want to check this out in a particular example, and I encourage you to always do this, let's look at the linear one-dimensional equation, x dot equals lambda x, with x at 0 equal x naught. We know how to solve this. x of t of comma x naught is e to the lambda t x naught. Time shift that solution. That's straightforward. And then we can substitute the time shifted solution in, do the differentiation, and we see we get lambda times x of t plus s x naught, and the initial condition of that solution is this expression right here. Now note that the solutions of this autonomous ODE satisfy these three properties. x at 0 of x naught equals x naught. That's just the definition at time 0. It satisfies the initial condition x naught. This is what we get from existence and uniqueness of solutions. So our vector field is CR. Then for each value of t, our solution will be a CR function of x naught. Remember, CR means r times differentiable, and each derivative is continuous. Now the last property is a little bit subtle and is worth thinking about. We know that x of t plus s is a solution. We know that time-shifted solutions are solutions. We know that x of t is a solution. But why are these two expressions equal? Because at time zero, they satisfy the same initial condition. That's crucial. That's a subtle point. We, this is where we use the fact that we have 
uniqueness of solutions. Okay, now we're going to introduce some fancy notation to rewrite these three properties. So, x of t comma x naught, we're going to leave out this, the middle argument t equals zero because we're going to take it as given that the initial time is zero. And we can always do that for autonomous equations because we can always shift to t equals zero. And that's why in, in many books on autonomous systems, they always assume that the initial condition is taken as t equals zero. So we're going to write that solution that I've underlined on the left as phi sub t of the argument where we just put a dot. And that dot is a placeholder for x. It's a very slick notation. The subscript t is time. And this is the definition here. So now if we rewrite the three properties on the previous page that I just derived, you look at what we have. Phi at time zero is just the identity map. It just returns what is the argument of this function. For each value of time, phi sub t is a CR function of the argument. And the last property, phi at t plus s, time shifted, is equal to phi sub t composed with phi sub s. This looks like a group property, and it is group composition. This is the definition of a flow on the phase space. The flow satisfy, a flow satisfies these three properties. It's also a one parameter, the parameter is time, group of transformations of the phase space. The solutions of autonomous equations do not define a flow. They do not satisfy the time shift property. Look at an example. x dot equals lambda tx. We can solve this equation. And the solution is here. Compute the time shifted solution. And we get this, this uh, expression here. All right, and you can easily verify that the time derivative d by dt of that time shifted solution is not lambda t times the time shifted solution. This is the key for non why non autonomous it, why this does not work the time shift property for non autonomous systems. We shift the solution, not the time dependent vector field. That's the key point here. OK, so we're going to use this property a lot, the properties of the flow. It may seem like a bit of an abstract property, but it comes up over and over in very fundamental arguments for the nature of the solutions of autonomous ODEs. And we're going to learn about some of those special solutions in the next lecture. So bye for now.